Um, now, before I start, I still would like to thank Stinsa for the nice introduction. And also, thank you for your work time for organizing this wonderful workshop. Uh, we are going to benefit a lot, and we are going to learn from each other. Um, also, thank our first two lectures. I hope that I have, I could take some course with you too when I was a grad student, but I did not. Uh, also, thank uh, our every colleague for coming. Um, now, what I'm going to talk about today is the indicator variable. Um, now, when I'm trying to teach STAS 330 and STAS 3 at the beginning of the class, I would like to give a review about the indicator variable and then how we're going to use them. Uh, there are two reasons for me to do that. Uh, and the first reason is that I think indicator variable is easy. So it's easy to teach. Uh, second reason is that I found it is very useful. So I say, I'm going to teach that. Um, so today I'm going to cover two things. Uh, first of all, what is the indicator variable, and then how we're going to use it. Now if I have time, then I give you a summary. Now here's the indicator variable. Uh, indicator variable can only take two values, 0 and 1. Uh, now if you have an event, uh, in statistics, we are talking about an event. So if you have an event, we can define the corresponding indicator variable. Uh, now the event is A, the indicator variable is IA. So the IA will take value 1 if the event A occurs, or take value 0 if the event A does not occur. Uh, I always toss a coin and toss a die with my sign, so I give you a toy example here. Uh, now suppose we toss a coin just once. Uh, and then there are two possible outcomes, that's the head and the tail. So I will use the head to denote H and the, uh, H to denote the head, sorry. And then T to denote the tail. Now A is getting the H in a toss, and then A is going to be an event. So that's the concept of the event. And then we define the corresponding indicator variable, IA. So IA is equal to 1 if we get H on the toss, and then if we get a T on the toss, IA is going to be 0. So it is an indicator variable because just two values. Now, let me move forward. Uh, now we define, we know what is the event. We define what is the indicator variable. So we use the A and I to denote them. Now what we are interested in is the expectation. Uh, we use the notation EIA. Now by the definition of the expectation, we can calculate the expectation of I. Uh, so it's just one times the probability i equal to 1 plus 0 times the probability of i equal to 0. Now, in general, the expectation is the summation of the possible value of i times the corresponding probability. So we have two possible values here, each one times the corresponding probability, and then we take the summation. Uh, second part will cancel out, and then we only have the first part. So the conclusion here is that the expectation of indicated variable is just the probability of indicated variable equal to 1. Now, that's what I wrote here. Uh, it is very simple, but it's going to be very useful here. Uh, now, I move to the one particular application of indicated variable in statistics. Uh, I would like to give one comment here is that indicated variable looks very, very simple. It only has two values. The expectation of indicated variable is just the probability of indicated variable equal to 1. But if we know how to use it effectively, it will be very, very helpful. Now, the following, I will just give some examples, and then I illustrate how to find the expectation of random variable based on indicated variable. Um, I need to drink coffee every day to start my day, so I, my example is about drinking coffee. Um, now, suppose I have to drink coffee every day uh, in the morning, and then now let me just assume that I just randomly pick a medium-sized coffee with probability half and then a small-sized coffee with probability half. And I also assume that I just drink one cup of coffee. That's not always true, but let us assume it is true. <laughs> and then x to be the number of the medium-sized coffee I drink in five days, so in one week. Uh, what will be the expectation of x? Um, now, when I ask this question in the class, and then most students in the class, they still remember that, OK, this x follows the binomial distribution. And the binomial distribution has two parameters. The first parameter, 5, is the number of coffees I drink. 
0.5 is the probability of drinking a medium-sized coffee. And then, okay, continue. They will tell me that what will be the expectation of x, I just in the first parameter, 5 times the second parameter, 0.5. So 5 times 0.5. Again, it's easy. Now, when I ask them that, okay, how are you going to find the expectation of binomial random variable? Uh, some students uh, can still remember something from the previous course. They say, okay, the range of x is from 0 to 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then they still know what is the definition of the expectation. Uh, the summation of the possible value of x times the corresponding probability. So that's good. They still remember that. And I say, okay, you don't need to memorize what is p, the probability of x equal to n. I can give you that. Uh, so the probability of x equal to n takes this form. Uh, and I ask them, how are you going to figure out in the final part? Um, in theory, this, this summation should be equal to 5 times 0.5. But can anybody tell me how to do that? Uh, the answer is quite negative. Most of the people forget how to get this summation. And then, OK, I say, calm down. I have a simple solution, which is based on the indicated variable. And we don't need to take an summation here. Now, here is my solution. Now, we first define five indicated variables. Uh, each indicated variable for one day. Uh, so xi is the corresponding indicated variable for the event that I choose medium-sized coffee on the ice day. Um, so xi equal to 0 if I choose medium-sized coffee. Otherwise, it will be 0. Now, what we can easily get is that the probability of xi equal to 1 is just equal to 0.5, because I have two choices, medium, small, and everyone has 0.5 probability. So after that, then I say, OK. The next step is just to say we can express x as the summation of xi. xi, you can say xi is number of coffee, number of medium-sized coffee I drink in one day. Now, if we take the summation, then we get x is number of medium-sized coffee I drink in five days. Uh, so once we figure out this part, then the following is just some calculation. Uh, so I write down the equations, the, se the sequence of equations, and then I'm going to interpret everything here. Now this step is just because x is equal to the summation. Uh, the second step is just we exchange the order of the summation and the expectation. Uh, so that's the result about the expectation. And the next is that how we going, we move to the third step. So the next is that what will be the expectation of xi. Uh, xi is the indicated variable, so the expectation of indicated variable is just the probability of indicated variable equal to 1. So we came to 1, 2, 3, 4, the fourth step. And then we mentioned that the probability of indicated variable equal to 0.5. So we plug in what is 0.5, and then we take the summation. We get 5 times 0.5. Um, so if you know how to use the indicated variable here, and then you don't need to do the summation before. So that's the story I would like to tell from this example. Uh, let me show one more example. Thank you. Um, now the background is just exactly the same as before. Um, but um, uh, in the second sentence, I just used the m to denote the medium size, small to denote, s to denote the small size. Otherwise, the first three sentences are the same. Uh, I'm going to introduce a new thing, which is called the uh, change over in the fourth sentence. So we start from here. Uh, we see that a change over occurs on the i state if the size of the coffee on the i state is different from that of the i minus one state. What we are interested in is the number of the change overs in five days. Uh, now, I give you an example here. Now, suppose I drink. Uh, five cups of coffee in a week. So we have small size, small size, medium size, medium size, and a small size. Then the change over will happen here and here. So the Saturday and the fifth day, because uh, these two days are different, these two days are different. And then why the number of the change over in five days will be equal to two. So in general, we need to find an expectation of y. Um, now, some students are really would like to try this question, and uh, they just follow in the uh, following way. 
So they fi first figure out the range of y is from 0 to 4. Uh, 0 means that we don't have change over 4 means that starting from the second day, every day we are going to be different. And they, they already know what is the definition of the expectation, so they just plug in n times the probability of y equal to n and take summation. And they find that it is very, very difficult for them to figure out what is probability of y equal to n in general. And they came to ask me that, oh, how should I continue? Is this question going to be covered in the final exam? <laughs> well, I say yes, because we have a very simple solution based on the indicated variable. Uh, here's the solution. Um, starting from i equal to 2 to 5, we define four indicated variables. Uh, if a change over occurs on the i state, then the indicated variable equal to 1, otherwise equal to 0. Now, I would like to emphasize that in the first day is not a change over, because we don't compare the first day with the zero state. So i start from 2, and then we have four indicated variables. Now, before I continue, I find what is the probability of y equal to 1. Now, change over, we have two types of change over. From S to M, and then from M to S. So probability of Y1 equal to I, or the probability of have a change over, is just the, the probability of from S to M, plus the probability from M to S. And the first the probability is 0.5 for this S, 0.5 for this M. The second probability we have 0.5 for M, 0.5 for S. So in total, it's 0.5. So every day, we have the 50% five, five probability to have a change over. And then we express our y in terms of the summation of yi. So we express y to be in the summation of four indicated variables. So we have the summation here. Again, we just follow the previous step. The expectation is equal to the expectation y is equal to the expectation of summation. Exchange in the order. Replace expectation of yi to be in the probability of yi. And plug in 0.5, then you get 4 times 0.5. Uh, and the story I would like to make is that uh, it's almost hopeless for the student to find the expectation of yi by definition. But using indicated variable, it's much easier. Uh, I escaped the wall two slides, and then I came to the last one. Uh, now, at the end of the, each a uh, topic I covered or at the beginning of the, each lecture, I would like to give a summary. Now here, I gave, just gave three sentence summary. We covered the indicated variable. We covered the expectation of the indicated variable. We covered how to find the expectation of a random variable by expressing it is as a summation of uh, indicated variable. So that's it. Thank you.